Hi, welcome to a quick review. So we're gonna see how this works. Please give me some feedback. So we left off, we had talked a little bit about electric potential energy. So I'm gonna do a quick review problem. First, realize that just like when we did force is equal to the small charge times the electric field. And the electric field, if you remember, we used absolute value of K, Q over R squared. And then we determine the direction based on whether it was attractive or repulsive with the point test charge. We're going to do the same thing with potential energy, which we do potential energy of the electric field, so sub E. And that is the little charge Q. And the little change here is delta V, where V is the electric potential. It is measured in volts, but let's make sure we know that that is called the electric potential. And the electric potential at any point is K times the charge divided by the distance to that point. And I missed the letter B here. So if we look at page 807, problem 23.21, we have two charges there and it wants to know for part A, what is the electric potential at the point A midway between the charges? So I set this up and I go K times Q1 divided by the distance 0.05 plus K times Q2 divided by 0.05. Please realize we do not use absolute values with electric potential. Put those together and double check me. I forgot my calculator at home, so I'm trying to use my smartphone. Not a good idea. It is negative 738 volts. Question B says, what is the electric potential at point B? Not quite as easy because the distances are different between A and B, but it is K times Q1 over 0 0.08 plus K times Q2 over 0 0.06. I got negative 705 volts, which means both of those would be considered below sea level if we thought about this as a topographical map. Delta V is final minus initial. So it is negative 705 minus a negative 738. I got 33 volts. And now I can finally find the potential energy or the amount of work it takes to go from A to B. And if I multiply that correctly, that is 82.5 nanojoules. Now, some quick review also. We want to remember Gauss's law before we continue. And there are three of them, E of a point, E of a wire, and E of a plane. Remember, we use epsilon zero more often than the letter K for constant. But one over four pi epsilon naught is equal to K, which is 99. We're going to start today by only using point charges, and we will work into a wire and a plane in subsequent weeks, but this week is mostly for testing this out to see if everything works. And to make sure to remind you, and I will at the end also, to take those attendance quizzes. I have to put attendance in Infinite Campus, and the only way I am sure that you have attended is if you answer that very simple question, did you log in today? So it turns out, just like a conservative force is minus the derivative of potential energy, um, the electric field is the negative derivative of electric potential. Um, so we're gonna start using that. We will actually use the opposite. We'll multiply both sides by dx and negative, and then we will integrate, but this is just looking ahead. Um, the electric field, when it is done this way, is called a gradient. And I want you guys to take a look at page 796 to 798 for some examples. I guess I should add an E onto the end there. Um, that's all we need right now as a quick review. We are going to use the electric field of a point for any and all of today's equations. So now let's combine potential energy and kinetic energy into total energy. So if you remember, the potential plus kinetic is total energy, and I gave you the equation in first semester. 
U1 plus K1 plus work other is equal to U2 plus K2. Um, realize that 90, maybe 99% of the time, work other is going to equal zero here. So let's try problem 23.5 on page 806. I actually reversed Q1 and Q2, but it turns out not to matter here. So you can probably do a better job if you keep Q2 on the right and Q1 on the left. So I'm going to find the potential energy one. Let me read the question to you so you can follow along. A small metal sphere carrying a net charge of Q1 is negative 2.8 microcoulombs is held at a stationary position by insulating supports. A second small metal sphere with a net charge of Q2 equals negative 7.80 microcoulombs and mass of 1.50 grams is projected towards Q. When the two spheres are 0.8 meters apart, Q2 is moving toward Q1 with a speed of 22 meters per second. Assume that the two spheres can be treated as point charges. You can ignore the force of gravity. A, what is the speed of Q2 when the spheres are 0.4 meters apart? So I take the first point would be 0.8 meters away. And I know that the electric field of a point charge is that, so I used K, Q over R. I come up with 0.2457 joules. Um, delta V is equal to E times D here. And so that's the equation that comes out. Um, I can find the kinetic energy at the beginning by using 1 half mv squared, please remember to do it in kilograms. So I used E negative three. I get 0.363 joules. Now I'm gonna find the potential energy when it's 0.4 meters away and it is 0.4914 joules. Going here, I'm gonna now use U1 plus K1 plus, or is equal to U2 plus K2 with W0 equals zero. So I'll put that over here. I have 0.2457 plus 0.363 is equal to 0.4914 plus kinetic energy 2. Notice the potential energy went up, which means the kinetic energy is going to go down. So I get K2 is 0.1173 joules. Set that equal to 1 half mv squared, and I get the velocity is 12.5. So it has gone from 22 meters per second to 12.5. Question B says, how close does Q1 get to Q2? So note at a minimum distance, the velocity is defined as zero. That's the first derivative test. So K2 is equal to zero. So if I go back into my U1 plus K1 is equal to U2 plus K2, I can solve for U2. I get 0 0.6087 and I set that equal to my equation that I used before, and I'm going to solve for R, and that tells me the closest they can get is 0.323 meters. After that, it would turn around and become repelled by the charge. So I want you guys to try problems from page 806, number 23.6 and 23.17. Um, good luck. Tomorrow, I'm going to post the answers to those problems, but I want you to try them on your own. Also, I will be doing a Schoology conference on Wednesday for the first half hour of those time slots. This is not mandatory, but just a good way to try and see if we can make this work. Uh, I hope to see you guys. Remember to keep taking those attendance quizzes. Uh, you can't get them wrong as long as you say yes. True. I logged in. So hopefully this works. Please keep in touch with me. My email is kevin.low at bbsd.org, and we'll see you soon.